Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. My adventure into the Enchanted Forest continues, and I am inviting you to come along and join me. I have my map and artifacts with me, and I am coloring my way through the forest to seek the mystery in the castle at the center. If you are up for the adventure, grab your gear and let's begin this journey together. If you missed the first parts and want to catch up, I have the playlist linked above and at the end with the rest of this journey. Today is the last day for this page, but the journey will continue later as I follow the map and clues to get to the castle. I am starting with the arrows, adding in some light colors to the one in the sunbeam and darker colors to the other arrow. The shaft is worked up with the walnut brown, a dark layer for the top one and a light layer for the bottom one. I blend the top arrow with a little brown ochre and give the bottom one a very light layer as well. The head of the arrow, I use the cold gray one to simulate a metallic appearance. Then I use the warm gray two for the fletching feathers, a lighter layer on the bottom arrow and more layers on the top arrow. For Mrs. Frisbee running up the side of the tree, I began with a base layer of the warm gray two over the whole body. I want a uniform color over the whole mouse, but I am not pressing too hard as I want to be able to go over this color with some light shadows. With the warm gray five, I add in some light shadows. Basically, the whole mouse is technically in shadow from the tree, but I add in more shadows to the underside of the belly and head. It is really subtle. Now that Mrs. Frisbee is complete, I'm moving on to the Great Owl. And today I learned that they changed her name to Mrs. Brisbee to avoid potential copyright infringement, and there goes another memory. Anyways, I began with sepia to put in shadows under the wings, under the front ruff, and along the left side of the Great Owl. With the brown ochre, I filled in around the eyes, two of the vertical stripes on the wings, and the front ruff. I'm keeping the layers light as I don't want to overpower the owl with this color. Already I noticed that it looks a little too much around the eyes. I put in a light layer of bister over the whole owl, except for under the eyes. I'm not sure what to do with that spot, so I leave it for now. With the bister, I am using the same technique for the roof tiles here on the front ruff. I am putting in a darker layer at the top of each little feather and lightening up to the nothing by the edge of the feather. I want the brown ochre to act as a light highlight here and the bister to do the heavy work. I also fill in the other feathers on the wings to create an alternating pattern. With the walnut brown, I want to come in and darken up the shadows a little more and work them into the rest of the surrounding areas. I use the walnut brown under the eyes, under the ruff, at the top of the wings, and in the feather tufts on the head. I blend together everything with the warm gray too. I add in some green gold for the eyes, but I didn't think it was bright enough so I added in a layer of cream. I tried to tone down the area around the eyes with more bister, then with my black I fill in the beak and the foot peeking out at the bottom. The gray owl is now finished and blends in nicely with the tree. I move on to the stag that watches my movements through the enchanted forest. A sentinel, perhaps? I begin with the brown ochre over the whole body. 
a very light layer as I want to build up the color. I'm just going off random memories of what a deer looks like. Sandy brownish, maybe? I begin putting in shadows with the sepia under the front ruff, under the head, in the ears, and any parts hidden by the leaves and tree. I add ivory over the antlers, more to prevent them from getting too dark with added layers. This isn't going to be their final color, but I definitely want them to be a light yellowish cream color. I also use the ivory on the face and around the eyes. I bring in the bister to darken up the shadowed areas and blend it into the lighter areas. I'm still keeping everything light and I'm trying to feel out the colors to get what I want. I add in another layer of brown ochre. For now, I have been keeping the front rough light in color, but I begin to creep the ochre further in towards the center. With the walnut brown, I add more shading and blending on the edges where I placed the sepia, as well as down in the leaves. I blend everything out with the warm gray too, even the antlers. Then to add in the slightly yellowish tint, I bring in the cream and add that on top of the antlers, as well as around the eyes and in the ears. If you've made it this far and have been enjoying coloring with me or just watching, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a like and subscribe to stay informed of when I post more videos, especially if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. Tomorrow will be the start of something new, so hit that subscribe button and color along with me from the beginning. The next 30 seconds I sped up quite a bit as my camera moved and cut off part of the tree, making it impossible to see what I'm doing. But I'll walk you through it. First, I lightly fill in the leaves in the sunbeam with the chrome green oxide. Next, I come in with the cream and, and filled in all of the geometric shapes on the trunk. I randomly select some of the shapes and fill those in with the green gold to give dimension and character. Finally, I bring in the walnut brown and begin adding layers to the shadows, trying to define the roots a little more and add a light layer over the whole tree. And this is where I begin to come more into the camera view down at the roots. I bring in my eraser for a couple of spots I went over on into the space under the tree. With the area cleaned up, I am coming in with the cream and filling in the space under the roots. I was going to go with something darker, but I wasn't liking how it looked when I tried it on the other side in one of the sections. So I'm going to go in with the cream instead, and I'm going to make the area look like a lit cave. 
Once I have a base layer of the cream down, I bring in the cadmium yellow and add in a darker part around the edges of the roots to make it look brighter at the edges and paler in the middle. I'm going to go through with the same yellow tint and work up all of the cream colored openings the same way, including the other cave under the other roots. Not much left to go after this. I have the leaves on the lichen tree and the sunbeams. The leaves I begin with the grass green. I wanted these leaves to be bright spring leaves. I put in a layer over the whole leaf and make it slightly darker at the base of the leaf.
Once I have the base layer in place, I bring in the permanent green to add in a little bit of shadow at the base of the leaves. I try to keep it just to the bottom of the leaf as I want them to remain bright green. Again, I am using small circular motions at the base of the leaf and then a couple of slightly larger circles to blend out the shadow.
and the key to making them bright green is blending the whole leaf out with the yellow lemon. I'm using a heavier hand with this as I want to blend them out and I want them to be done. The end is so close. I go through and blend out all the leaves and that leaves just the sunbeams. For the sunbeams, I have already gone through and added in all of the colors in a light layer to all the things being touched by the sunbeam. Now with the cream, I am going through and putting down several layers over the whole marked off area to create the illusion of light flooding through the trees. This is the only layer this part of the sunbeam will get, so I want to make sure I am filling in the tooth of the paper well. After I finished all three sunbeams, I noticed part of the root on one treehouse tree needed a little straightening and touching up, so I came back in with the walnut brown and touched that up. The finished spread is up ahead. I wanted to thank you for joining in with me on this adventure through the Enchanted Forest. Let me know below or on social media if you liked this journey. I'd love to know what you think. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, MeWe, and Patreon. Patreon has a short write-up, my palettes, and a list of the timestamps that I've made available for everyone. If you have any questions or page requests, please leave them below or reach out to me on social media. I put in a list of chapter breaks in the show notes, as well as a list of equipment I like to use. If you use any of the affiliate links, it really helps me out without costing you a thing. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me on this coloring journey. I appreciate all my subscribers and look forward to more of you joining in and coloring along with me. Please like, share, and subscribe to help that happen. Until next time, happy coloring! Following the map I received, I enter the cool forest on an early spring morning. I startle a little mouse up the tree where it disappears into a tiny little opening. Could that possibly be a window? The owl hoots its good night, and lights seem to appear from tiny openings in the trees. They are windows! The magnolia tree is in full bloom, looking amazing with its large tulip-shaped blossoms and vibrant colors. The sun pours through the openings in the spring canopy to light the ground and leaves. A majestic stag watches my progress. A sentinel, perhaps? Someone is about as I spy arrows in the trunk. Were they hunting the stag or something more sinister? The stag bounds off as I try to enjoy the crisp bite to the early spring air. I walk with purpose, 
following my map and compass, each step bringing me ever closer to the castle and the secret it holds.